The achievement, I think, if you uh, if you find uh, the news uh, today, uh, our um, our minister of uh, international cooperation, she is uh, awarded at the first Dr. lady. Dr. Yes, of course, Dr. Sahaba. <coughs> She's awarded, and this is something it's, it which make made me very happy at the moment when I hear I'm hearing that that you know our minister is she's a lady and then she uh, awarded the uh, first lady in you know, the EU and to achieve something um, about uh, the achievement we have now in the parliament more than 200 women in the uh, parliament so I think I think it's a very good achievement too uh, the national uh, the national center the national uh, council of uh, women now did a lot to try to educate, to try to educate the electorate about the, the question of electorate and, 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 and something else, to try to make a program, education program for all, all people, and we reach it to do that. This is something I think it's very important, uh, especially in the region and the villages and uh, so on. Uh, after the revolution, you saw the role of the woman and the Egyptian woman, what she did in the uh, elections and in in 26 and of during the revolution and, and during the revolution and the, the election, the many elections, we have you do what the the, the, the cure of, of the woman and the, the ladies, and I think the uh, uh, the state uh, give payback to her. This is what I'm feeling. What I'm Really, I am feeling very optimistic about the uh, woman. I think she started to take her rights. When we take when the woman rights, no, she takes her right. Maybe maybe some people different with me or agree. I don't know. But but what I'm, I'm, I'm saying, and in my personal idea, that the woman Egyptian woman really started to take all her uh, in this period. I think it's it is the golden period to us because they started to take all the rights and that. But, okay. Go ahead, Dr. Uh, to continue. Okay. Uh, but I have, you know, uh, I mean, some comments in the law, the mm -hmm. women law, and this is, we can talk later if you want to. Yeah, doctor, but is that the case in rural areas as well? Or because uh, we're talking about women in the cities, what about the, the, the unprivileged areas and ladies in the unprivileged areas as well? The unprivileged area and really out of the, the capital. Out of, out of the capital. Out of the yeah, capital. In the south of Egypt. In this is our priority as Ministry of Culture, to go out of the capital. This is our priority, time priority, because, you know, uh, you, you, you see, the capital it's not bad i think it's not bad about education about 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 all the inconvenience and all the disadvantage we we see it in the village and in the region this is our prime priority to go back up there and to reach there and to reach uh, to make program with the ministry of youth uh, ministry of uh, of uh, uh, national council of women and and ministry of education Together we can we make we make program to apply the a very high program to education to to to, to speak with the women uh, breadwinners and women to uh, try to make to resolve all the problem of the women there. Yes, what about the uh, Egyptian soft power and the positive image that we have gained in recent years following the 2011 revolution? How does that uh, help us and enhance the Egyptian? international status and the regional and the African role for Egypt and the country. Okay. Our priority is to cooperate with Africa. This is our uh, the, the priority in, in cooperation with uh, international cooperation. Uh, you know, uh, as foreign relation, cultural foreign relation, uh, all countries, uh, they are, you know, uh, scar yeah, uh, starving to be in Egypt and to cooperate with Egypt. Egypt is the, uh, yeah, it is the only country, um, the panorama in the world. This is what I'm feeling as an employer or as an undersecretary for agreement, international agreement. When we make agreement when all the old, when some countries, all the rest of the countries try to make agreement more to culture because we have a fully, fully of culture and civilization in Egypt. With, if you compare with other uh, 
countries. Uh, so uh, what I want to, I want to say is that Egypt is a panorama for all over the world. We have uh, a very uh, level, high level uh, representative uh, internationally in all the countries. Uh, we make a festival, uh, we try to cooperate to make a seminar, exchange seminar, cultural seminar together with uh, uh, Africa, the, the, the African countries and the, uh, the rest of, of countries too. They are very interesting to be there and we are very interested to cooperate with them. Well, Dr. Iman, uh, uh, before we wrap up uh, uh, this interview, Excuse I'd me? like to ask you about, um, from your field of expertise, the challenges facing women in Egypt. The challenges facing in Egypt, if you compare, about women, about women, no? <coughs> if you compare the law in Egypt about women or the articles of women in the constitution, you find that the constitution give a, yeah, um, we can say that uh, 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 right, some rights to her. If you compare with Tunisian law for men, you find a very gap between the law there and the law here. Tunisian women are very protected. She's, she's, she's a very protected woman by law. She's very protected toward the harassment, toward the violence, uh, uh, the family violence uh, from the she has you know a very 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 high rights in you know the, the, the woman in the world and Tunisia is an Arabic country so, so we have or or I want to first apply the law second uh, try to uh, revise or revive the uh, the law again. Yes, and what the law, would, the law would happen in the This is the challenge, the only challenge is that I Yes, I uh, Dr. Iman Negmadi, I'm the Secretary of the Ministry of Culture. Thank you very much for being with us today on Malcruz. Thank you, thank you for the teamwork too. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And uh, we will be going out for a quick break, so stay tuned. Hello. You're still watching Nile Cruise on Nile TV and in the second segment of the program we turn from the International Women's Day to nanosciences, nanotechnology and robotics as the paper wireless motion control of the paramagnetic microparticle using a magnetic based robotic system with the open configuration by Dr. Islam Khalil and others was awarded with the best application paper award at the International Conference on the Manipulation manufacturing and measurement on the nanoscale in China in 2015 and the ultimate ambition of this conference series is to bridge the gap between the nanosciences and the engineering sciences aiming at technology opportunities and new markets the advanced technologies for manipulation manufacturing and measurement at the nanoscale promise new revolutionary products and methods in numerous areas of uh, application and to be speaking more about the development of such a field. Uh, today we are hosting Professor Dr. Islam Khalil, the Assistant Professor of uh, Robotics. Thank you very much for being with us today Thank on Nile Cruise. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Rashid. Welcome Thank with you. us, Dr. Islam. Actually, 
uh, it's worth mentioning also that actually the, the paper itself has been implemented and already they've underwent uh, the experimentations uh, of it to make uh, a sperm inspired micro robots and that would be helping in many uh, medical uh, procedures as well like cancer treatment for instance. Now Dr. Islam first of all would you tell us uh, more about uh, the start of that idea and how did you start uh, the experiment? Uh, well uh, thank you for the introduction and uh, the, the first thing is uh, too many groups, too many research groups are now working on the development of uh, micro robotic systems. Uh, the ultimate goal of these systems is to target uh, cancer cells. This is one of the applications. Uh, we are building small robots. Uh, they are tiny. You cannot see them with the naked eye. And we can achieve control, precise motion control of these robots. And one of the applications, uh, one of the applications is just target therapy, where uh, you, uh, you dream of putting several microbots inside the cardiovascular system of a human and under the influence of controlled magnetic fields or any other source you will move these microbots towards a diseased cell and uh, that's how we, we think the, the future of medicine is going to be uh, target therapy so what we do in our lab is building these microbots uh, some of them are uh, just uh, particles, like uh, tiny spheres, and they are magnetic, and they can be coated with, with any chemotherapeutic chem agent. Some other robots are just like the sperm cell. Uh, they have morpholo morphology that's similar to microorganisms, like E. coli bacteria, like sperm cells, as you mentioned. Uh, so we have diverse, uh, di diversity of, of, let's say, microrobots uh, with different locomotion mechanisms and uh, we control their motion and the next step is, is moving towards application. So this is about robotics. Yes. Is robotics a part of nanosciences or is it vice versa? Well, uh, this science is part of robotics, yeah. Yes. yeah. Well, why do we call this, this, this tiny things micro-robots? Because actually when, when you look at the thing, you will say this is not a robot. We are used to, to, to see robots with joints, with actuators, with uh, like in cartoons, okay? Yes. But uh, when you look at a robot that looks like a sperm cell, uh, you will say, why are you calling this a micro-robot? Uh, actually, the thing is, all, all the counterparts, all the elements in a robot exist, but in a different scale. So if you are thinking of how I'm going to make uh, a huge robot small, it, it, you will face a lot of technological barriers. You cannot make a small battery. You cannot make a small motor in nanoscale. Uh, 